We want to be to the house of the Lord. And we're just everyday people that love God, that want to worship him and magnify God with you. Amen. At this time, the brethren are going to come to help us to receive the Sunday morning tithe and Sunday morning worship offering. You give as unto the Lord and God will bless you. We can give online at our website at myntcc.org slash junctioncityks or on Cash App. Makes it very easy at dollar sign NTCC Junction City or the good old fashioned way. Just drop it in the offering bag and God will bless you. We need to receive some good offerings for the Lord. There are needs in the house of God and believe it or not, you know, money doesn't grow on trees around the house of God and we are supported by your faithful giving, your faithful tithe. And that's how the work here is supported. We don't receive finances from any outside sources. So today, today, let's give a good offering as unto the Lord. We give it everywhere else, but today, today, pray, pray and ask God to say, God, what is it that you'd have me to give to support your work? And our prayer is that God will bless you abundantly. Amen. Brother Jim, sir, would you please pray? Amen. And amen. Thank you for your giving and may God bless you for it abundantly. And our God is a good God that knows how to bless us. Amen. amen. How many have already been blessed by Jesus, right? Yes. And thankful that he came and died for us and forgave us of our sins. And we are very, very thankful for that this morning. Amen. amen. And so right before we begin, um, I'd like to wish Brother Eric happy birthday. Amen. amen. If you don't know who Eric was, he was the one that was helping Jim receive the offering. So happy birthday to you. God bless you abundantly. Amen. And then just a moment, um, Reverend Palmer is coming to preach to us. We know that this is Reverend Palmer's last Sunday service with us at this time. Amen. On Monday, tomorrow, he'll be leaving for Washington State, and he'll be making a stop, a couple stops along the way, some places. So will be praying for him that God will give him traveling grace and mercy, and that God will grant him a safe journey to Washington State. But we have appreciated having him here. He's been here like five years, I think he told me. And so we appreciate his faithfulness. So today I thought it would be good to let him preach to you and uh, give him your undivided attention. Pray for him. We appreciate Reverend Palmer. Amen? Amen. God bless you, sir. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in God's house this morning. Reading just a few verses from the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Brethren, I count, count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore as many be, as be perfect be thus minded. And if in, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Going back to verse 14 for our text. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This morning I'm preaching on the title, pressing toward the mark, the mark, pressing toward the mark. Pastor Gandhi, would you please pray?
come to praise you, we come to receive from you. And you know exactly what each one needs in their heart and in their life. Bless the remainder of the service. We'll be very careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. How many want the kingdom of God this morning? Amen. Amen. We sing that song, the glory land way, and we must do so through Jesus Christ. There is no other way this morning. God has given us his word. God has given us his spirit to direct us on this journey. Therefore, it is entirely, it is entirely up to us to follow after him. This is a daily choice we each have to make. And the most beautiful and wonderful thing about all of, all of this is that God will assist us. God will help us along the way as, as along as we allow him to do so in our lives. We find how Paul, going to verse 13, how that he said, forgetting those things which are behind. We have to let go of some things in our life in order to come to God. We must let go of, we know we have to let go of our sins. We have to let go of our past faults, past failures, and the old uh, way or the old manner of life. He says to forget these things, to let them go completely, never go back. This isn't to say that we forget where God has dug us out from or brought us out from. We remember so that we do not go back to the past this morning. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing, foreseen, we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We find here that he tells us to lay aside every weight. What is a weight? This is something that hinders us. This is something that slows us down in our progress for Almighty God. Whether it's sin, whether it's uh, anything of this world, it could be a career, it could be a, a spouse, it could be anything, really, anything in this world, anything put in front of God Almighty is a hindrance to us. But if there's sin in our lives, this hinders God from hearing us. We know we know our God is a holy and righteous God. He hates sin, and he hates the sin in a sinner's life, but he still loves the sinner this morning. No matter how pretty, no matter how a pleasurable sin portrays itself, you see, the effects of sin destroys the lives of men and women. This is why God hates it. God detests sin this morning. You see, he doesn't want us. He doesn't want mankind to be destroyed, but he wants us to be free. He wants us to have an abundant life in his son, Jesus Christ. So how? How do we let go? How do we forget? He tells us we have to confess. We must confess our sin. Sin, we know, is the breaking of God's laws or God's commandments. Thus, it separates us from God Almighty. But the good news is God has given mankind the solution if we would simply confess it to him. If we would simply confess it to Jesus, not to me, not to the pastor, but to God, to God, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. I don't have the power to save you. A pastor don't have the power to save you, but Jesus Christ can save you from your sins this morning. 1 John 1 and 9. Sound familiar? It's a, th it's a Thursday night. 1 John 1 and 9. He says this, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Just confess. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. We must go to Jesus. Going down to chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. My little, my little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with, with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the entire world. God, that Christ became the sins of the entire world. He is our advocate. He is our go-between, if you will. He pleads on our behalf to God the Father, the very same prayer he prayed when he was upon that cross. He's saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Do you understand what he's talking about here? This is God. This is God the Son pleading to God the Father on our behalf. Jesus Christ is on our side this morning. 
So how can Christ do this? He's the propitiation or the atonement for our sin, the payment for sin uh, required a sacrifice, if you will. And all the animal sacrifices and all the Old Testament could not get the job done. You see, the wrath of God was appeased only when Christ shed his precious blood and died upon that cross for you and I this morning. Thank God for our advocate in Christ. He also said this, we have to let go, lay aside the sin that does so easily beset us. What is the author talking about here? What so easily surrounds us? It is simply unbelief. Why do people not confess? Why do people not fully surrender to the Lord? It is because they simply do not believe. I've done so much wrong, Lord. God can't forgive me. I messed up so many times. If, I, if God simply forgive me this time, I'll just go right back to it. What's the point? What's the use? Has God lost his uh, cleansing power? Has God lost his saving power this morning? There is still hope for you today. There is still power in the blood of a lamb this morning. First John, once again, if we would confess... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. This is exactly what it means. We must come unto him, confess it to the Lord, and he shall forgive you this morning. And this is exactly what all Christianity is all about. The just shall live by faith. You see, we don't work for salvation, but we simply believe on what Christ has already accomplished on the cross for us, then the works will follow. It's not the other way around. We must come to ourselves. We must come to ourselves and realize, you know what? I'm tired of living against God's word. I'm tired of living day in and day out, not getting anywhere uh, in life. I want to do something for Almighty God. I want God to help me in my time of need. What happened with the prodigal son in Luke 15? We know that how... This young boy came to his father and asked him to divide his inheritance. And his father gave him his inheritance. And we know he went off into a far country and wasted it on righteous living. And he finally came to himself. Luke 15, verses 17 and 18. This is what it says. It says, And when he, when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger, I will arise, go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee. This young man got to the place in his life to where he's tired of living in the condition that he was in. So my question to you now is, are you of tired living in the situation that you're in? Are you tired of living in sin? Are you tired of just going through the motions of life without any purpose? He has finally come. This young man came to the place to where he was willing to leave it all behind. Whatever mess that he has caused, even though he caused it upon himself, he was willing to leave it all behind. He was willing to forget about it and move on back to his father. And you see, this morning, we too must be willing to confess our sins before the Lord. Leave them all behind this morning. So he tells us, Forgetting, let, letting go of those things which are behind. And next we find that he says, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Reaching forth unto the things which are before. And here's a revelation this morning. You can't reach forth if you're still holding on. What did Jesus say? He said, come unto me, all ye labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. How many have received that rest for your souls this morning? After you have uh, given your life to Jesus Christ, you felt that peace, you felt that burden rolled away, you felt all that excess weight, everything just coming apart, everything just being uh, taken off of, off of your shoulders, if you will, it felt so light, you felt so good, and you truly have never experienced that in your entire life this morning. And if you have never experienced Christ in a reality like this this morning, is a great opportunity to just surrender, to lay it all down at the feet of Jesus Christ this morning. Why? Why continue to hold on to the unnecessary burdens when you could simply give it all over to Jesus? We must believe. We must believe and simply let it all go. 
Hebrews 12 and 2. And there's so many correlations here between Hebrews 12, 12 and 2, 1 and 2, uh, and with Philippians 3, 13 through 15. There's so many similarities here. And look at this. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right, right hand of the throne of God. Looking, we're looking to Jesus. We're reaching towards uh, the things in Christ. You see, all these verbs are in the present tense. This also means that we actively, we daily put forth the effort in doing so. This isn't just a one-time thing. What did Jesus say? He said, if any man will come after will follow me, we must pick up our cross daily and follow him. We have to do this continually in our lives. And what's the problem? So what's the problem? You see, many times we're looking everywhere else and we're looking to everyone else but to Jesus Christ. We're so easily, we're so easily distracted by all the things that are going on in this, in this world. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to work hard. I need to take care of my family and all these different things. And all these things are good and they're well in their place. But you see, if God comes after, if God comes after these, then there is a major problem. God must come first in our lives today. Matthew 6, 33, our scripture for Tuesday night. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. God knows exactly what we need of this morning. He knows how to take care of us. But the prerequisite is that we must put them above our needs. We must put them above our desires first. Psalm 84 and 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give, will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold the, from them that walk uprightly. We're walking uprightly. We're continually looking to God. We're continually serving God and doing what God would have us to do. And if we do this, as long as we do this, what did God say? He will uh, give us the good things. He will bless us. He will give us the very desires of our hearts. You see, this morning, the best life is to be a Christian and the best life is to serve God. You see, it's a win-win for us today. We come to God with all our mess. We come to God with all our problems. And God forgives us. God forgives us. Why? Because he is faithful. He is just. And we daily live for him. And not only will God meet our needs, not only will God take care of us, he will give us the very desires of our heart. What better deal is there than that? It pays to put God first this morning. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Going on to our text, to verse 14, Philippians 3, 14. Paul writing here, he said, I press toward the mark, the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What is the goal? What is the end destination for the believer striving for as Christians? What is the ultimate prize for us this morning? Is it not to make it into the kingdom of God? Is it not to obtain that crown of and glory? Philippians 3, 20 and 21. For our conversation is in heaven, for once also we look, so we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the work, working whereby he is able to even subdue all things unto himself shall be changed and fashioned unto the Lord this morning our body our mortal bodies shall put on immortality there'll be no more tears there'll be no more sorrow no more pain and we can be in the presence of God Almighty forever and ever praising his holy name what a day of rejoicing this will be we're looking towards heaven we're striving towards heaven but how on earth can we expect to enter God's heaven without doing it God's way? How can we make it into the kingdom of God without going through Jesus Christ? When you sign up for the army, did you just go to the recruiter and all of a sudden he said, here's your OTPs, here's your M4, there you are, you're a soldier now. No, that's not what happened. You had to go through training, you had to go through basic, you had to go through AIT. 
You got up when they said to get up. You did the exercises they said to do. You qualified at the range and all these different things and done all these different tasks. And if you failed at one of the tasks, you get recycled again. You have to pass the test before uh, you become that soldier, if you will. And that's the same way with God. You see, we can't just, uh, we can't just claim that we're uh, simply a Christian. We can't just have a cross around our neck, if you will. We can't just have Jesus on a bumper sticker of our car. But you see, it's more than all these things. And did you know, did you know, it's more than just attending church. It's more than just reading the Bible. It's even more than praying. It's all about having a reality and a relationship with the Lord this morning. It's about knowing him, knowing Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. We have to know him in a reality this morning. And lastly, we find how that we must have this spiritual mindset or the mind of Christ. We have to have a spiritual mindset. Verse 15, let us therefore as many as, many as be perfect be thus minded. If, that, if we are to be complete, if we are to be whole, we must have this kind of mindset. We must be more spiritually minded. Galatians 5 and 16. Sound familiar again? Galatians 5, 16. This, this I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And what did the Bible say? As many are as led by the spirit, then we're the sons of God. We're not doing that. We're not doing the things of the uh, partaking of the sinful things of the world any longer. We have given our full attention to the things of God to follow after God. You see, as we do this, the things of this life, the things of this world will become dimmer and dimmer and God will just simply become brighter and brighter. And as we give ourselves to God, there'll be no time for the devil this morning. But at the same time, it's not saying you have to be super spiritual. Do you know what I'm talking about? You don't have to be super spiritual. Have you ever heard that phrase? Don't be so heavenly minded to where you're no earthly good. Yes, we have to fulfill our earthly obligations. Yes, we have to do all these things. We have to make ends meet. We have to take care of ourselves, our family, etc. All these different things. But you see, we're still living in this carnal world. But at the same time, it does not mean we partake of the sinful things in this life. You see, throughout our our life on earth, our aim, our goal, our desires, our affections, what we're striving for are upon, the, upon God, upon the things of God. God must come first in all that we do. God must come first in all that we do this morning. What kind of mindset did Jesus have? What kind of mindset did Christ have? Let's go over to Philippians, Philippians 2, 2 and 5. He said this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, Jesus has given us the ultimate example of humility, selfless service, and sacrifice. And what did Jesus say? Jesus also said in John 8, he said, I do always those things that please the Father. His entire life, his entire ministry was led and directed by God. Can we make such a declaration in our lives? I always do the things that please God, the Father. Or are we simply doing whatever it is that we want to do all the time, pleasing our own selves. You see, this is something to seriously consider. We must be, uh, we must be about the Father's business this morning. And he also gave us that ultimate example of a submissive mind. He gave us the ultimate example of a submissive mind. And you see, today there is only one way to serve the Lord God this morning, to fully surrender, to fully say, God, here am I. What is it that you want me to to do. So how did Jesus surrender to God? How did Jesus surrender to the Father? Luke 22 and 42. He said this right in the Garden of Gethsemane uh, before he was crucified. He said, Father, if thou be willing, 
remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And what a, what a powerful prayer this was. And the will of the Father was more important than what Christ wanted himself. You see, if Jesus was not to die upon that cross, no one else could and no one else would. If Jesus was not to die upon that cross, then salvation would have never came to mankind. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. In other words, he was saying, I don't wish to go through with this, Father. I don't wish to die upon the cross. I don't want to go through the pain. I don't want to go through all the suffering. But nevertheless, not what I want, but I'm willing to what? Uh, I'm willing to do what you would have me to do this morning. I'm preaching about pressing toward the mark this morning. So this morning, will you, uh, will you come to that place to where you will forget about the past? Will you come to the place to where you surrender it all over to the Lord? Surrender your sins. Surrender the old, life, the old way of life and reach towards the things of God. Reach to him. Reach towards God and allow Jesus to be real in your life this morning. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and reverence to God as Pastor Ganey comes. Will you allow God to come into your life this morning? Will you allow him? Will you find, uh, find that place to where you fully surrender and give it all over to Jesus this morning? Pressing toward the mark. Many times people, they give their life to God. All heads are bowed, eyes are closed, still reverence to the Lord. They start out good for God. They give their life to Jesus. And then they begin to allow the distractions of life to come their way. We don't pray that way that we used to pray. We don't give ourselves to the word of God the way that we used to give ourselves to the word of God. And the things of God no longer are as important to us. But the exhortation today is, Let's lay aside those things. Let's lay aside those things that have caused us distractions in our life for God and press towards the mark.